Hey there everybody, I'm Rain. Welcome to the Etherochemical Research Facility. This is a level 60 instance required to progress the Heavensward main scenario. It does not drop any gear and is a little lengthy. Think of it as a four-man castrum or praetorium. The first boss you will encounter in the research facility is Regula Van Hydras as he clears some Allegan trash mobs of his own at Analysis Improving. Like almost every other boss in Final Fantasy XIV, Van Hydras has a medium damage cleave. His is called Bastard Bluss, so I thought I would mention it for that reason alone. Obviously, face this ability away from the party. Van Hydras will turn and face one of the party members and stun them for about 6 seconds before placing an electric pool beneath them. After a short duration, this player will explode dealing medium damage to themselves and any other players nearby. Throughout the fight, Van Hydras will deploy Magitek turrets, some identified as Roman numeral 1 and some as Roman numeral 2. Turrets marked as 1 will lock onto a player with a line of sight laser similar to the gunmen from Brayflock's longstop hard mode. The tank can intercept this line, but the damage isn't severe if they do not. Type 2 turrets will target party members with Aether Chemical Granado. This is a large circle AoE that should be avoided. If the turrets are not killed quickly enough, they will cast Self-Destruct and deal large, unavoidable party-wide damage, about 6,000 to a non-tank player. Because of this, it is imperative that the entire party focus to kill all of them as quickly as possible, since more than one turret exploding will likely wipe the party. While any turrets are alive, Van Hydras will also cast Magitek Slug, a large column AoE that should be avoided by the party. Getting hit by Magitek Slug will deal medium damage. Van Hydras will also cast a large purple AoE called Magitek Spread. While the proper name for this AoE shape is probably an inverted conal AoE or something like that, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a Pac-Man shaped AoE. Move to the conal safe zone behind Van Hydras to avoid taking high damage and a knockback from this ability. After clearing bioweapon research, you will find Harmachis at Evaluation and Authentication. I recommend that you make sure to focus target this boss. Harmachis will open the fight up by commencing his bioweapon assessment. Throughout the fight, Harmachis will cast Weighing of the Heart, transforming into reduced forms of various coil bosses. When entering Anti-Cobra mode, Harmachis will transform into an Allegan Cobra with the appearance of Caduceus from turn 1, generating a stacking damage buff and hitting the tank pretty hard before reverting to its Sphinx form. Harmachis will also engage in Anti-Naga mode, transforming into a mob with the likeness of Melisine from turn 7. In this form, it will cast Petrifaction. To deal with Petrifaction, physically face away from the boss until the animation completes, similar to Turn 7 or Angra Man use Mortal Gaze ability from World of Darkness. If you are facing Harmachis when this cast completes, you will be petrified for 10 seconds. Harmachis will also cast Circle of Flames in this form, quickly throwing two fireballs out that will deal splash damage to all players hit. Make sure to stay spread out from the other party members during the anti-Naga testing. Harmachi's last test will be Anti-Machina mode, now adopting the likeness of the Avatar from turn 8. Harmachis will bind a single player in place, and in order for that player to avoid taking massive damage, one other player must run into the AoE with them. No more, and no less. Running out of the AoE before waiting for both sound effects to go off will result in the bound player taking massive damage just as it does in turn 8, so keep this in mind if you're Rusty or were typically the designated homing missile slash brainjack person. Your day to do ballistics has finally come. In this form, Harmachis will also mark a player with Gaseous Bomb. Similar to turn 8, players should stack up on the Mark player to split the damage of this attack. Once its anti-machina testing is complete, Harmachis will once again revert to its Sphinx form. It will continue to rotate between these three forms until it is defeated. In its Sphinx form, Harmachis has a few other abilities it can cast. Harmachis has a Konal AoE Poison Breath attack that will give anyone hit a potent poison damage over time stack. These stacks can and should be cleansed. Harmachis will also target a player with Riddle of the Sphinx, a medium-sized circle AoE that should be dodged. The last ability Harmachis will use in its Sphinx form is Ka, a large conal AoE that players should move out of. When you reach the Neuralink in a cell, you will find Laha Brea and Igiorum trying to do dirty Zodiac related things that Warriors of Light can't be having in their ancient Allegan constructs. They will immediately notice your new level 60 status and, having not had their asses whooped in quite a good while, will humbly request a beating from you. And as you are a warrior of light, there is no option here but to oblige. Upon pulling one of the Asians, La Habrea will politely step off the battlefield because while we could certainly handle both at once, we don't want anyone feeling chipped because the other Asian got their asses handed to them more shamefully. Igiorum will kick the fight off by casting Dark Orb on their primary target, dealing medium damage. 
This is their assault ability, and as such, they will continue to cast it regularly throughout the encounter. Igiorm will also cast Sea of Pitch. This ability will place AoE puddles underneath of each of the party members that should be moved out of. La Habrea will also cast a large column AoE called End of Days through the middle of the arena following Sea of Pitch in an attempt to catch you off guard, but they should know better. Avoid this to the best of your ability. Igiorum will also cast Blizzard Sphere. Orbs will appear all around the outside of the arena and simultaneously detonate, creating a safe zone only in the center of the arena. La Habrea will also put Fire Spheres in the center of the arena while Igiorum Spheres are detonating. How kind! Move to the outside to avoid the detonations. The Asians will continue to alternate while the patterns become increasingly random and complex. Simply do your best to outmaneuver them. Being hit by any spheres will deal damage to the player and inflict suppression, a stacking debuff that lasts for 30 seconds, increasing your vulnerability and reducing your total HP. Dark Blizzard 2 and Dark Fire 2 will be cast by the Asians after the fun orb dodging phase is ended. Several random circle AoE telegraphs will appear around the room and players should move out of these while also watching for the idle Asians end of days casts. Getting hit by Dark Blizzard 2 or Dark Fire 2 will deal light damage. The Asians also cast Shadow Flare, dealing unavoidable medium party-wide damage at the end of a lengthy cast. At around 45% health, Igiorum will switch places with La Habrea. Don't forget to change your focus target. Igiorum will freeze the stage during your battle with La Habrea. These guys are hardcore cheaters. The slippery stage will make you more susceptible to all of the AoEs, so try to maneuver yourself as safely as possible. Handle La Habrea just as you did his girlfriend, and at around 49% health, they'll call it quitsies. The final encounter of the Etherochemical Research Facility is Opta- Oh, Asian Prime. I'm pretty tired of these guys with their mysterious cutscenes and special black word bubbles of pink text, so let's see if we can get rid of them. For good. Prime's first cast will be Ancient Eruption. AoE Circle Telegraphs will spawn underneath all of the party members. Move out of these telegraphs like you would any other. Prime will cast Shadow Flare just as the Asians did, and once again, it will deal unavoidable party-wide damage. At 79% health, Prime will become invulnerable and move to the center of the arena while channeling a Blizzard Sphere and a Fire Sphere. Burn these two spheres down as quickly as possible. While channeling, two players will also be marked with giant pink donut AoEs. Having the whole party stacked together while killing the spheres is the easiest way to deal with these AoEs, but if your party is split up, they are still relatively simple to dodge. After the orbs are destroyed or reach Prime, he will cast Annihilation, dealing damage based on the amount of health the spears had left, if any, and spawning several black portals around the outskirts of the arena. This process will repeat again at 39% with the pink donut AoEs casting twice. Prime's Universal Manipulation ability is a super slow cast, immediately indicating it is an important one. To avoid a myriad of debilitating effects, move into one of the portals around the room when Prime casts this ability. This will stun, bleed, and fetter you for a short duration, but it will also protect you from universal manipulation. Failure to take shelter in one of these portals will inflict you with 20 seconds of sleep, blind, and paralysis, as well as 10 seconds of silence and pacification. You will also take elite damage, and by elite, I mean a few thousand. Prime's second cast of this ability at 39% will also inflict amnesia, minimum, and slow if you are hit by it. Entropic Flame is another spell Primal cast that places three medium damage column AoEs at its feet which aim at various party members. Getting hit by Entropic Flame will give you a stack of suppression, so getting hit by two or more of these columns while you are sleeping could easily make you the deadest member of the party. After the second cast of Universal Manipulation, Prime will periodically tether all four party members each to a Chaos Sphere. These orbs are relatively harmless and only deal a few thousand damage to the player who intercepts them. Heal through the damage and continue to burn Asian Prime down and the fight will be over before you know it. Congratulations on clearing the Etherochemical Research Facility. Thanks for watching my guide, and if you liked it and want to see more of my Heaven's Ward videos, feel free to subscribe. I appreciate your support and thank you for watching. Until next time, this is Rain, signing off.